A group calling itself Concerned Students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is calling for an interim administrative body to take over from the current management of the university. The group believes the Vice Chancellor, Professor Kwesi Ubri Danzo, and his team could have prevented Monday's demonstration and subsequent destruction of property. Though the concerned students condemn their colleagues for the vandalism, they insist the university authorities must be held responsible. Emmanuel, Yadi, Emmanuel Yadombwachi speaks for the group. The concerned students have resolved that, one, the failure of leadership from the university management is solely responsible for the unfortunate event of last Monday and calls for the following management members, that is the VC, Dean of Students, the Head of Security, the University Relations Officer who has been lying here and there, telling and twisting issues and facts just as he wanted to be set aside for investigations and other relevant issues to continue or to um, move on. That, number two, that there should be the formation of an interim management of the university since um, those in charge now couldn't manage things well and couldn't help matters. Number three, that there is the need for reforms in the policies of the university to reverse the status quo and restore the true independence of the students. The students must control their resources. There is this unpopular decision by the VC, the Dean of Students, and the authorities that from the finance ministry, according to them, the finance ministry is saying um, the school should have a consolidated account where the Dean of Students would take charge of all the accounts, sign their um, account um, checks for them before they are able to get funds from their own account, which their members pay dues into. And these are some of our um, reliefs that we are telling the administration, the authorities, should give back the power to the students because resources is our means and our source of power in doing our things. Now, the concerned students also believe building new halls of residence is a more prudent way of increasing female student population. Mr. Bache describes as misplaced priority the construction of a fence wall around the university when the resources could have been channeled into providing student accommodation. I think the financial indiscipline on the part of the school authorities has resulted in the school building of a wall at off campus, which has been termed by students as the Jericho Wall. And we believe firmly that the bricks, the blocks, the strength, energies, and the monies, the funds used in building these walls could have been channeled in getting or raising a very firm foundation for our next wall that could have accommodated all the females that the VC would have wanted to admit. The University Teachers Association of Ghana, meanwhile, has mounted strong defense against calls for the Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to either resign or be sacked. National President of UTAC, Dr. Eriko Poku, says Professor Kwesi Obri Danso cannot be blamed for the behavior of the students and that attempts to get him removed are unfortunate. His comments come on the back of calls from some politicians, alumni, and students of KNUSD demanding the Vice Chancellor vacate his post to restore sanity to the campus. Dr. Poku Hava tells Joy News the University's Council is well constituted and must be allowed to find an amicable solution to the problems there. What we are concerned as a national body are comments coming from certain political actors, you know, on social media platforms and on radio, calling for the head of the vice chancellor. We think this call is unfortunate and unnecessary, especially at this time because Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has a governing council. And the council is properly constituted. It will interest many to know that government has four representatives on the council. One of them is the chair of the council. And the council has a representation from SIS, SRC. The SRC president is on council. The Utah president is on that same council. TEU, the Tertiary Education Workers Union, has a representation on council. 
and Charles also has a representation. And therefore, this very matter that has brought about this crisis was a policy decision that was made at council, of which the vice chancellor is a member. Of course, the vice chancellor is the head of the management team of the university. And therefore, as a result of student response to this policy, if certain things, certain unfortunate things have happened, UTAC does not think that the entire blame should be laid at the feet of the vice chancellor. Be it as it may, whatever has happened, we think that these political actors ought to be mindful and circumspect of the comments they are making and allow the governing council to act. Because the, the constitution gives provision for the president to appoint the chair of the governing council. So technically, when you take every public university, including KNUST, the council has a strong government representation. I think that it will be okay if we, we criticize what has happened. But to, you know, you see a calculated attempt by certain individuals who are associated with government targeting and making comments that are suggested of the fact that a plan has been hatched and that the vice chancellor needs to go down. UTAC doesn't support that position. And what we want to tell these individuals is to stay away from the university and allow the legitimate council to work. Right now, joining us uh, on or from our Kumasi studios is the University Relations Officer, uh, of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Mr. Kwame Yabwa. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us. Also, we also have on the line Yab Wampong. He's a president of the National Union of Ghana Students, KNUST. He is also joining us on telephone. But I'd like to start with you, uh, Mr. Kwame Yabwa Jr., the University Relations Officer uh, for the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Te Technology. Now, can you share with us what's the very latest as far as the closure of the university is concerned. Do we know when the students are to report back? Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, the latest the latest or the update of what has happened as we speak now is that um, yesterday the management of the university led by the chairman of our council and government representatives uh, including the Minister for Education, uh, the Minister for National Security, the Minister of Information Designate, the Ashanti Regional Minister and others also met us. And in the discussions that we had, they had wanted or they wanted to find out from the, the university management through the Vice Chancellor uh, what had happened on the Monday. The Vice Chancellor outlined everything that happened and some discussions went on, questions were asked and uh, answers provided. So at the end of it all, it was decided that the management of the university should go back have the council meeting and then see how best what has happened can be resolved so that uh, as quickly as possible the university would be open for business to go on. This morning attempt to clear the mess after the Monday incident has gone on so a lot of work is going on to clear whatever debris that we have on campus and the council has decided that on Friday there is going to be an emergency meeting to look at what, uh, the, to look at the task that has been, uh, the tasks, the task that the the the, the governor, governing, uh, the government team uh, asked asked the, the council to do. So as we speak now, that is an update of uh, what happened on Monday. Now, how soon are you able to tell when the school is going to be reopened? 
Uh, it will be very difficult for me to tell as we sit here. Council is meeting on Friday, and one can only tell when uh, the dates for the reopening can be given after the meeting of council, but on Friday. Right. Now, a number of things has been said as to why and how we came to this point where the university had to be shut down. Have the university management been able to settle on what may have gone wrong? As I've indicated earlier, the council is here to meet. So I won't be able to tell anything now till the council meets. Well, the students, we've heard some of, from some of the uh, students, the concerned students uh, of the KNUSD, and they are calling for the removal of the vice chancellor of the university. And essentially, they are saying that the buck should stop with him. Yes, I've, I've, I've heard that. Does, does the vice chancellor have any plans of moving at all or going anywhere? No, as far as I know, no. They're blaming him squarely for what happened. Why, why are they blaming him? Well, essentially why they're saying they blaming that... Him? They're talking about the fact that the university authorities, whatever be the case, they are the ones in charge. And they should have acted to the concerns that the students came up with all this while. And that the failure of the university authorities to act resulted in the kind of uh, chaos and rumpus we had on the university campus. Well, I must say all the concerns of students are looked at by... The, the, the management of the university. So when the students talk as if they are somewhere and management of the university are on the other side, sometimes I get, I get a, bit, a bit confused. All, you see, the, the university is run on a where students are represented on boards that we have or committees. Decisions taken have their input. So when the just go their way to state that they have no say, they are not listening to, uh, I, get, I get baffled. The concerns of students are looked into, except that sometimes the concerns, how the students possibly might want, by, would have wanted to go, uh, uh, will not be what they want. And that doesn't mean it hasn't been looked at. Uh, looked at. All We've right. had council meetings where decisions that are taken have students' input. And we have, we have evidence to that effect. Right. Now, so one, I'm not too certain the, ex, the, 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 the exact... One of the yeah. concerns that they've come up with strongly has to do with the brutalization of the students. You say that these concerns were looked into. How were they resolved? If we're talking about what the incident on the Friday, where the students wanted to have... Uh, what they refer to as morale, where they drum dance and do all sorts of things. Um, the arrests that were made, whatever concerns the student had, uh, would, would have been provided on the Monday uh, onwards. But we, when, we, when, when we, 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 we entered into Monday, we had the incident that, that we all witnessed. But this never happened, and then we had the, the incident that we all witnessed. It, it, it's very, very. Awesome. Now you talk about the Friday incident, but then we also have a video which uh, I'm sure we have made uh, available to you, where a student was uh, lashed actually, and this apparently happened two years ago. Where before we actually get to that, we're going to show you this video which you have actually seen, where a student is being lashed. Under what circumstances, or students are being lashed, under what circumstances are these students being lashed? I think this incident happened quite a long time. 
the uh, the lecturer in question as to why, as to why he did that, uh, he, he he knew that. But I'm, that uh, he 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 knew that. But I'm 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 very very confident and, and sure that this particular lecturer was sanctioned. But isn't that how it starts? I mean, if the students are lashed, and yes, they are sanctioned, um, the lecturer is sanctioned, others on the campus... But I want to find out, is this fair practice? Is this something that the no, university is, endorses? It, it is not. It is not. It's just one out of... It, it's, it was the only, 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 only incident. And I'm very surprised this uh, has, has, has been brought now. All right. Something that happened long ago, we all have forgotten about it. Uh, it's been dealt with, so I don't see why it should be brought out now. Well, the students are not forgetting about it, but I'd like you to hold on. We have uh, Yab Wampong. He's the president of the National Union of Ghana Students, uh, uh, KNUSD, and uh, he's joined us on telephone. Now, Yao, you've heard uh, what the university relations officer has been uh, talking about. He talks about the fact that you are allowed at the table. You are giving a seat at the table to discuss some of these concerns that come up and so you can't say that the university has not been addressing the concerns hello yeah one pong yeah israel yes a very good evening to your viewers and then listeners all right so how do you respond to the concerns raised by uh, the university relations officer he's talking about the fact that you guys are giving a seat at the table and so you can't quite say that the university has not been addressing the concerns that you have. Israel, adequately, I think that we cannot give us this through the appropriate context, but we believe that student leadership and then students actually has been maligned and taken for granted for too long. When you say maligned and taken for granted for too long, please explain. Especially when these issues of brutalities were complained. On several platforms, we've had responses from the university relations officers and then the management of the university, but not on any platform have they sought to address directly the issues of brutality. And that is what we are talking about, that we've been maligned. The, you, the incidents of brutality that you're talking about, this, uh, you're referring to what happened on Friday. The university relations officer is saying that these issues are going to be handled or addressed on Monday. Fact is that Israel, um, a month ago, a similar incident happened, and then several reports were given to the various um, quarters, especially the head of security of the university, as well as the office of the dean of students, and I believe through that same office to the vice chancellor. But as we speak, nothing of a communication whatsoever was directed in response to the incident that happened about a month ago. This followed with the recent incident last Friday, and the students felt that since it had happened once, not twice, thrice, we felt that adequate responses should have been given prior to even Friday's incident. So when it happened on Friday, we thought that enough was enough, and then we should act appropriately. All right, so, uh, Yao, please hold on to the uh, line for me. I'm going to bring on the investor relations officer. Now, Mr. Kwame Yabua Jr., you heard uh, Yao Wampon say that they have had concerns as far back uh, as a month ago that they didn't think that the university had dealt with uh, constructively. How do you respond to that? Um, Israel, you know, the university runs on a And the wheels of justice uh, are going slowly. Uh, we don't have a situation where when a, an incident is reported, we would have the vice chancellor getting up to tell this person to be fired, to assert. We've had cases of students, students in traction, many students who have done certain things that would have, if the vice chancellor or whoever is in charge were to be that of class, would have said these students were sacked. The students are witnesses. These How students were are sacked. The students are witnesses. Committees are set up, Think, uh, the, 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 the incident is looked into, and then uh, those found culpable are, are punished. Sometimes it takes a bit of time, but in the end, uh, sanctions are profit. So um, if an incident takes place, and in a month's time, 
um, you haven't had what you expect to hear, I don't think it's the license for you to say, well, we've reported this and it hasn't been done, so we'll do what is appropriate. Um, my, my student, uh, Nukes uh, pre president or PRO, uh, you know very well that there are some students whose um, infractions were brought to the university committees, were set up, even the, 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 the constitution of the committee has, has a student in it. Sometimes we have situations where students even complete school before sanctions are preferred. You know it. So, as I indicated earlier, the, wheel, the wheels of justice grind slowly. So sometimes um, you may think justice has been denied, but no. So I would have wished you would have taken your time and we continue to judge you. I don't think the vice chancellor's uh, doors are closed to any student, even my doors. But Mr. Kwame the, Yabwa. The, the uh, SRC president and some of his uh, colleagues. Yeah. Yes, Ms. I'm, I'm Mr. Listening. Kwame Yabwa, you indicated earlier that the incident that happened on Friday, there was going to be an outcome or a resolution on Monday. That was in just three days. But in the case that happened a month ago, you're saying that the wheels of justice grind slowly. That's uh, No, what I mean, what I mean is real. What I mean is, I, I didn't say it was going to be resolved. Definitely, there were going to be some discussions. Normally, the security, they, they do their own investigation, submit reports, and the student would have brought their, 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 their uh, case that they feel they weren't treated fairly. They could have brought it. And uh, the, the, the university was going to receive it. A committee would have been set up. And then investigation starts, and then possibly uh, sanctions are preferred or preferred. Now, Mr. Uh, we have had situations where some of our security uh, pers personnel who, who did what they weren't supposed to do have been sanctioned. Some have been asked even to go home. All right. Mr. Kwame, well, I'd, I'd want us to end on this note. Now, is it the case that the kind of students you're having yeah. at the university are just so unruly or you think that their maturity levels are low? Or is it the case that the university authorities are not able to manage these kind of students? I, I wouldn't say they are largely unruly. No, I wouldn't say so. The are they unmanageable? We have, we have a lot of them who are mature. Are they, they unmanageable? Many, many of them are manageable, many, many of them. But we have a few of them who feel they, can, they are not under the law, they can, take it upon, uh, in, they can take the law into their hands and behave anyhow. The incidents which the students talked about. Security concerns that they have been raised by University Hall in particular. The students of University Hall in particular said, no, we'll go ahead. And no, normally when they do it, there are a lot of problems for, for, for the university. So I must say a few of them, not, not the majority, a few of them are those who create problems for the management of the university. So largely, I'm, I would say that the university is capable of managing this large number who are law-abiding. But the problem we have is those few who wouldn't want to go by the rules and regulations of the university. All right, you talk about these few that uh, you're having a challenge with. Will then that be will that then be a problem of the management not being able to manage the students? If there's just a few of them, we we managing them. When I say few, is relative. When I say few, is relative. We are managing them. We're managing them. We try as much as possible to manage them. There are a lot of the issues that, as an institution, we feel there is no need to bring everything out there. We try and manage them in-house. In, in 
All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kwame Yawa Jr. That's where we'd have to end the conversation. He's a university relations officer of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. We also had on the line Yao Buampong, who's the president of the National Union of Ghana Students, uh, KNUST, and he joined us uh, via telephone. Unfortunately, we can't carry on with any more of the conversation. We are watching Joy News Prime. We're taking a break here on the bulletin. <laughs> The Supreme Court has said November 6 to hear arguments from lawyers in the case challenging the construction of a national cathedral. James Kabner Bonfer, a member of the Convention People's Party in March 2017, dragged the Attorney General to the Apex Court seeking a declaration that the decision of the government of Ghana to support the construction of a national cathedral amounts to an excessive entanglement of the Republic of Ghana and religion and therefore unconstitutional. The court on Wednesday also ordered lawyers in the case to file relevant written arguments within seven days. There is more in the following report. Justices Julius Ansa and Sophia Adenira assured they are eager to deal with the matter. The panel then ordered the parties in the case to file memorandum of agreed issues within seven days. Justice Ansa said this is to ensure that the case is determined expeditiously. Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Yebo Adami reminded the court of the pending injunction application against the construction of the cathedral. Justice Ansa responded that the court will deal with that later. The case has been adjourned to November 6. Mr. Bonfer remains confident ahead of the hearing. My question is that the state must not seek to raise one religion above any other. The state must not seek to discriminate against any religion. The state must not seek to overly entangle itself in religious affairs. So long as we are supposed to respect equality of all religions, I think that attempts by governments in the past Engagements by governments in the past and in the present with respect to involvement in Islamic pilgrimages to Hajj by the setting up of Hajj board and committing state resources and in another instance seeking to build a so-called national church they are an affront to the, to the constitutional uh, process and I feel that the Supreme Court should be invited to make a determination on that matter. The U.S. Embassy in Ghana says America will see through its defense cooperation agreement with Ghana to ensure both countries achieve the full benefits of the deal. The agreement generated approval concerns Ghana's sovereignty will be threatened by the presence of American soldiers in the country. But newly deployed press attache at the embassy, Naomi Mathos, says America is committed to a mutually beneficial relationship with Ghana. You know, the U.S. government and the Ghanaian government have very strong bilateral ties, and the same goes for our military-to-military -military, um, commitments. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to work with the Ghanaian government with this agreement, and, um, you know, we're on the right track, and our commitment is strong with the government of Ghana, and we look forward to the future. Ms. Matho said this during a visit to the multimedia group to interact with managers of the company. She hailed the group's ethos to give voice to, voice to the voiceless as a positive enterprise. Continue the good collaboration that we've had um, with the uh, media landscape in Ghana, with all the media houses and uh, with state-owned and private-owned, um, because we really do value in the U.S. government the role the press plays in holding um, uh, accountable, you know, the, the government in place and the Ghanaian government and also the different institutions and giving voice to the marginalized, as you all said in our meeting. I think we all think that is very, very important that these stories are told and it's uh it's been an honor to meet joy and uh, fm and tv and the multimedia uh, group because it's really nice to hear that uh the journalist core here in ghana put so much effort into like i said giving voice to the marginalized The Electoral Commission will, from Thursday, October 25, 2018, begin exhibition of the voters' register in the 47 districts to be joined to new regions. Over 2 million voters who will be taking part in the referendum for the creation of the new regions will have the opportunity to verify their details during the process. 
The exercise follows the limited registration exercise carried out by the Commission in the referendum enclave. Gracie Parker Wilson has the rest of the story. Head of the referendum for the creation of six new regions, the Electoral Commission is to display the voters' register at the various polling centers in 47 districts to be formed into new regions. The exhibition the Commission explained would provide the opportunity for Ghanaians to safeguard the credibility of the voters' register which mostly generate controversy prior to and during elections in the country. During this period of exhibition, both the 2018 Provisional Voters' Register and the 2016 Voters' Register would be placed at the exhibition centers for prospective voters to verify their details as captured and make requests for amendments or insertions where necessary. Other lists which will be placed at the exhibition centers are as follows the exception or exclusions list, and the multiple registration lists. All prospective voters whose names, photos, and other details appear on the exceptions lists or the multiple registration lists will not have their names and photographs in the main lists. Chairperson of the Commission, Jin Mengsa, has been speaking about their readiness for the seven-day exercise. An exhibition supervisor and two deputy exhibition supervisors for each of the districts, as well as one exhibition officer for each exhibition center, have been recruited and trained for the impending exhibition exercise. All logistics for the exhibition exercise have been procured and will be delivered and have been delivered to the districts in readiness for the exhibition exercise. Well, chair of the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensa, is mounting a strong defense for the composition of a new committee to draw a roadmap for the implementation of the law that will allow Ghanaians living abroad to vote. According to her, the terms of reference of the com new committee is different from that of the 2011 committee. Private legal practitioner Samsung Ladia Yenini questioned the need for a new roadmap, describing the move as a waste of resources. But Jean Mensa insists the work of the 2011 committee only focused on Ghanaians working at various embassies and not Ghanaians living abroad. We agreed that the committee would be set up, you know, and would include a representative from the MPP, a representative from the NDC, and one rep from the non-parliamentary parties. It would also include two, civil, two members of civil society and three members of the commission. So it's based on their work, you know, that would inform the commission on how to start and whether or not to implement it for 2020. So these are the questions we have put in, in, in terms of the terms of reference that we've given to the working group, whether or not it will be possible to implement WOPA fully at all, at all in 2020, and if, it's, if, it, if there are things that it, we should implement, whether it should be piloted or whether we should go full scale. But is it possible that 2020 we can implement Europa? Well, it's because difficult Because I know that work, work, work has been done, I'm, I'm told by the Commission. Not much. In the past, as you know, you know, ex some work has been done, but it focused on Ghanaians who were working at the various embassies and who were students that had been supported by, who were given scholarship by the governor government to go to school and so on. They were registered and allowed to vote, mm -hmm. even that they were voting by proxy. Okay. This means that we have to go to 48 countries, and I'm sure there are more, where Ghana has, you know, high commissions and, the, you know, register people. I, I think there's a criteria of registering about a, uh, you know, not less than 500 people in each country. And so you look at that. So it's, it's a lot of work that has to be done. Is this the that 2011 registered? committee you're talking about? Because we, we know is, that 2011, yes. there was a committee. They've done some work on it. They've so so a I have a problem with the, 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 the new committee that is yet to set, set up mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. again do the same work that the 2011 committee yeah. did. It's not the same work. Because the 2011, what they did was to register Ghanaians who were working in, you know, the embassies, as I said, and Ghanaian students who were on scholarship from the government of Ghana scholarship. Right. Now we are talking about extending to every Ghanaian. That registration hasn't been done. Mm. You know, it hasn't been done, and, you know, they haven't been provided, you know, records and so, I mean, a, an opportunity to register and vote there. Mm. So this is a very different matter. It's very extensive. It's like holding elections within our country, Ghana, here. So okay. it's a very different matter. Paramount chief of the Busa traditional area in the Upper East region, Nab Zagzu and Zantilo II, has reminded President Kufado 
to carry out projects he promised people of the region. Now, Zagzu and Zantilo II says they had made available lands for the execution of those projects. The Paramount chief, whose area has seen the construction of 12 mechanized boreholes, said this when he led a delegation of traditional rulers to the Jubilee House Wednesday afternoon. A report by Latifi Dries. According to NAB Zagzu Azantilo II, President Okufuado made the promises in July 2018 when he visited the Brusso South District. I want to remind you of your promise to see to it that the following development projects are considered as your priority when you visited the district in July this year and appeal to you to consider fulfilling them. These are that the government comes to our assistance to complete a self-help project for a senior high school at Chichuliga. Two, the government absorbs the Weaga Community School into the public system. The tiring of the Navarongo Sandema Weaga Fumisu Road still remain uncompleted after so many years. President Akufuado on his part said he is determined to fulfill the promises but has a bigger plan to reduce the level of migration of the youth from the upper regions to the south. We want now to move our country to all-round year agriculture, especially in your areas. And these things that are being done, the one village, one dam, the warehouse, all of these are to put together the infrastructure that would allow that to happen so that you would have relief, you'd have greater productivity, and then also we can find a way of keeping the young men up there to work for their lives instead of coming here. The development of our human capital is the most important thing that we have to do. Because once that is done, as we have seen from other countries, the process of development becomes much easier. The Paramount chief and his people, however, made a commitment to the president to ensure the sustainability of the free senior high school policy. We found out that Ghana is really a beacon of stability, of democracy. Also at the Jubilee House was the African Union Commission for Peace and Security, led by President of the Commission, Smile Shegri. In a meeting with the President, Smile Shegri and the delegation commended Ghana for recording one of the lowest per capita violence on the African continent. Anti-corruption organization Corruption Watch has indicted two former executive directors of the, of the Environmental Protection Agency, John Puamang and Peter Abum Sakodia, for signing of questionable contracts worth more than 1.5 million Ghana CDs. According to an investigator with Corruption Watch, Frederick Esiama, Peter Abum Sakodia, in 2017, without approval from the Entity Tender Committee, signed off over 210,000 Ghana CDs contract to Trinity 3 Consult for the supply of items for Christmas packages for EPA staff and retirees. He indicated the contract went wrong, costing the agency some 64,000 CDs after the price of a box containing 12 bottles of better mold was hiked from 50 Ghana CDs to 150 CDs. Mr. Abum Sakwadi, who was executive director from August of 2017, until around April 2018. He committed a similar breach in December 2017 when he was then the executive director of the EPA. He signed off a 210,892 uh, CDs contract to Trinity 3 Consult for the supply of items for Christmas packages for EPA staff and retirees. That contract went wrong. And why do I say so? because it cost the EPA 64,066 cities. After the price of a box containing 12 bottles of better malt was hiked from 50 Ghana cities to 150 Ghana cities. So a box of better malt costs 50 Ghana cities? Yes, a box. 12 that bottles. Pack, it has 12 bottles in it. But it was moved to 150 Ghana cities. Yes. Let me just chip in that. You remember when we were doing the NLA contracts, there was also a case of better mod. In that case, also, the unit price was 50 Ghana cities. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. But in this case, the price, the unit price moved from 50 Ghana cities to 150. So the ahead, noti Fred. notification of contract award letter dated 14 December 2017 and signed by Mr. Sakode indicated the unit price of Better Mort at 150 cities. This amount was three times the figure recorded in the evaluation report, which captured the bidding price for Better Mort as 50 cities. But former executive director Peter Abum Sakodi has defended uh, signing the contract without the entity tender committee. Seriously, I didn't engage in any procurement um, procedures because by then the entity tender committee for procurement had not been constituted. So, and by, by, the, by the status of my appointment or my office, I had a threshold of any procurement that was below 100,000, that's 1 billion cities. I could just give it to them to do on the selective tender. That was a smaller amount. So the, the normal about routine supplies of this, I would just give it to them. Please. Uh, they, they, I didn't even know uh, then they were doing it, bringing an sign because that was within my threshold. But I didn't do any serious procurement apart from one other one, the one which happened in December. The, the agency had, as a tradition, every year they do what they call end of year party. And then during that occasion to uh, we, we honor non-serving non -serving, uh, workers. This procurement, it had already been budgeted in the previous year, because it was the previous year, 2016 budget, that was in in progress in 2017. Mm -hmm. So the money, the, the board had approved of the budget already. The budget had been approved already. As at the time I, we, were, we were talking, it had been approved already and we were getting closer, we were in December and the goods were to be ready by 15th. So if we were to go open tender and all those things, that one wouldn't have been able to make us do the procurement and to meet the, the timelines. So I said, in that case, let us give it to selective tender where you request for quotations. Mm -hmm. That's also, you see, another form of purpose. Outside our own uh, staff. Also, Charles Ameva, who was then Deputy Executive Director in charge of Finance and Administration at the EPA, the ultimate supervisor of procurement activities, admitted to the inflated price for better mode, but described it as an error. He ever indicated the supplier Trinity 3 consult has since been notified of the overpayment, but it's yet to be refunded. It was post-payment that we were establishing order for documentation to be filed that the error then came to light. And immediately I saw that there was a discrepancy. We saw that there was a discrepancy between the notification letter and then the tender evaluation or the quotation evaluation report that was when we raised an alarm and we started the notification measures from then. Exactly what did you do? Well immediately we drew the attention of the executive director that we had made some payment in error and he mandated me to take immediate steps to recover the payment. So we wrote a letter to the supplier informing him about the discrepancy that has led to the repayment and then asking him to uh, to respond by acknowledging the, the error and then by also uh, refunding the total amount involved. So we got a response subsequent to that from the supplier to the effect that yes, they were in agreement that there was an error that had led to an payment that they had received and that uh, because they had had some financial challenges even after receiving those payments that we had made to them, they were not in, in position to refund immediately, but they were committing to a three installment payment to fund the money. Now, many of Accra's residents are not satisfied with the quality of water supply through their taps. This is according to a study conducted by the Delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Ghana, which also found out that the Ghana Water Company is very confident about the quality of potable water it is serving its clients. 
This misunderstanding is one of the many issues that the delegation is hoping to resolve at a stakeholders meeting on access to clean drinking water and sustainable water management in Ghana to be held on November 13 this year. Head of the Competence Center for Energy and Environment, Katharina Felginga, has been speaking with joining us about the initiative seeking to ensure sustainable water supply in Ghana. The delegation of German industry and commerce in Ghana usually works uh, mostly in facilitating business-to-business -business interactions so that we can contribute to economic development here in Ghana. But we realize that in the water sector, there are some bigger issues that are beyond the immediate control of companies that need to be addressed together with various partners. So we have embarked on a broader market study to identify the major and main challenges in the water sector, uh, which can then be addressed together uh, by companies, by government, by non-governmental organizations, civil society, which will be our next step after this report. So what exactly are some of the contents of this report? So this report highlights one, uh, some of the major challenges uh, in the water sector that comprise water quality, water quality monitoring, uh, water supply challenges, for example, as they relate to infrastructure. Um, we're also looking at the institutional framework, for example, the alignment of different institutions, both government and non-governmental, uh, that work in the same area and sometimes uh, overlap in responsibilities. Um, we're looking at access to finance to implement new uh, solutions to improve water supply and water quality and similar issues. So a wide range, but the most pressing challenges. And one of the interesting issues you raise has to do with water quality. And uh, it's one of the issues you're going to be focusing on. But why water quality? Because we uh, see in the market when you discuss, for example, with users, both private households and companies that use a lot of water, that there seem to be water quality issues, uh, which then led us to the question of how water quality is being monitored. But we also see that there are different interests in maybe not talking about the issue or addressing it upfront. So our approach would be to get these different sites together, user groups, uh, the water suppliers, infrastructure companies, to then discuss where the problems lie and how to best address them. The Department of Social Welfare is taking steps to reunite a 13-year-old girl with relatives after her father and a friend who defiled her were jailed. Unable to withstand persistent abuse from her 52-year-old father, the teenager sought refuge with a family friend who also took advantage of the situation and defiled her. The father and his 60-year-old friend are already serving 17 years and 12 years prison sentence, respectively, after a Jasso court, circuit court convicted them. Ohim Interior traveled to the farming community to trace the victim who was in the care of local leaders. The road to Ajanafu via Nsunyamiye in the Afram Plains area of Asante Achim North is rough and muddy. Some stretches are unmotorable. The sexual abuse victim and her eight-year-old brother lived in this farmhouse with their incestuous father, Akwesi Donko. Since his wife died five years ago, he has turned to his daughter for sexual pleasure. When she could no longer endure the agony of playing her father's mistress, the girl ran to the next cottage to seek refuge in her father's friend, sister-year-old Openin Akwesiamwa. Angered by the development, the father confronted his friend and accused him of unduly keeping his children for two nights during which he had searched for them. A quarrel that ensued between them drew some farmers to the scene who caused the arrest after getting a hint of what had led to the misunderstanding. The traumatized girl and her eight-year-old brother, who had the unpleasant experience of seeing her sister defiled by the father, have been undergoing psychological treatment. Thomas Ousu Enchi is the district director of the Department of Social Welfare. Even the small boy say that the father has done the wrong thing, he deserves to be punished. And it will interest you, know, interest you to know that the kind of agony that these children have gone through. I learned the man sometimes just come and take the girl to do the thing. 
or sometimes even do it in the presence of the boy, thinking that the boy was asleep. The boy told me that in one occasion, when he even woke up, the father hit him with a torchlight. Officials have traced the relatives of the children to the northern region. At the time of our visit, they were headed for the Bolivan Boy District in the company of an emissary. Mr. Usuanchi recommends more intensive care and attention to enable them to overcome the trauma. There is a whole lot of plan for that girl and the brother. You know, in terms of their education, in terms of their help need, in terms of how to seek support from other collateral sources. And that is why we have to write an official letter to the Department of Social Welfare uh, in that particular community, Bamboy district, where they come from, so that the officer will also continue with the monitoring system, supervision system, liaising with NGOs and other uh, 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 entities, individuals, groups, churches, CBOs, and all that. From Ejanafo in the Asante Achim North district of the Ashanti region for Joy News, Ohim Interior reports. Students of Laboni Senior High School had their turn today to see how a hot air balloon works. For many, it was an accomplishment as they have only known the theories for years. Meanwhile, day four of the Carvel hot air balloon flight has been described as one of the best trips. Nancy M. Fajardozi has been with the team all day and reports. It's day four of the Cowbell Hot Air Balloon and already we are getting closer to the final day which is expected to end on Saturday. Today we've been joined by another two sets of ladies and a gentleman who are going to partake um, in this flight. I mean, I think this is the second time we're having two ladies and a gentleman. Um, always a gentleman said they're not intimidated by the ladies. I don't know how he's going to react today, but thank you very much guys for um, speaking to me. How I'm, was I'm, I'm very, very anxious. Look. Matilda, how are you? Fine, thank you. Are you all gingered up for this? Yeah. So tell me, what are you expecting? I yeah, I'm not, I'm not scared, but I'm good to go. Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Kindly come closer to me uh, for a very, very brief moment. I'm feeling so good, like so relaxed. I don't know. I, I'm feeling so relaxed. I just can't wait to be in it. That's this is the first time I'm going to be all up in the air? Yeah, yeah. What are you expecting? Uh, I, I'm just expecting to see places whilst I'm, I'm, I'm that um, above the earth. That's all. Cone, um, letting go of the rope to finally, to finally set off. It's exactly 5:30, and there they go, straight up in the sky. Today it was easier to find the hot air balloon as the direction was so clear. So after an hour of chasing the hot air balloon, today we finally, or I finally personally saw the hot air balloon land. Uh, yeah, that, this is my first time of seeing it. I'm feeling great and good because the, when it gets up there, the, the weather is very chilled. It's very different from London. Really? Yeah. What about you, Jesse? I heard you were scared. Oh, no. Nah. That, that, that's a rumor. That was a rumor. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I was excited about the whole experience. I mean, and I'm happy that's ended, though. Peggy, are you also happy it's ended or you want more? Oh, one more, one more. I was feeling like a star girl, though, because you guys waving at everybody downstairs. Waving there. I'm saying hello to them. Like, like oh very, very God. important. How the cast were all coming, the cameraman. Eh? Like, we're feeling like, wow. Yeah, we are special people. A day in a star girl's life. So I want all of you to say something at once. One, two, three. How would you describe the flight in what, just one word? One, two, go. It was great. What, great. It was great. 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 <laughs> all right. Good job, guys. Mm. Hi, Captain. How was the flight for you? That was a brilliant morning. Brilliant. We had a very good speed to make it up to Dawa. So we uh, covered about 35 kilometers. Incredible weather, no clouds, great visibility. Also on the ocean. So brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Gideon, I mean, this is my first time I've seen this, this hot air balloon land. This is your first time I've seen it too. Now, I, I've been coordinating this project right from the beginning, but this is the first time I also saw the landing. Wow. I'm telling you, and it's, it's, it's amazing. 
Archimedes principle has been thought in several schools across the country, in fact, across the world. But for us here in Ghana, uh, we've learned about it. We know the theory behind it. We know the principle. But then when it comes to the practical, we don't have access to it because, I mean, we don't have the equipment that we're able to help us to learn it. But today, um, Carl Behotel Balloon was brought here and been demonstrated to them physically. First of all, let me find out from you. You are the assistant girls prefect and you do science. How do you feel seeing this for the very first time? I'm happy because for us, most of the things we do in physics, we do chew and pull. We don't understand. We just keep it in our minds when we get the questions and we solve it. But we don't understand it physically. Sometimes, we, from the Ghanaians say, we, we hear that seeing is believing. When you see something, it sticks faster than you chewing it in your head. You even give more understanding on the principle. And I'm very, very happy that they've come to Laboni. And we appreciate them very much for coming. And we always do theory, 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 but less understand. But today we've seen how it works and how it is. So I think I've even gotten more understanding in the accumulated principle. Okay, I'm very, very happy because to be frank, in Laboni, we normally do the theory stuff, so we don't do the practical. And today, seeing this on the foot, I'm very, very happy. Initially, when I saw the fire, I got scared because I've never seen such thing before.